Hey guys, Zach Lack here, back with another video. Recently, I got back from Nebraska for Science Olympiad Nationals. And if you guys remember my previous Science Olympiad video about regionals, in it, I promised to keep you guys updated on my Science Olympiad journey. So for the state competition, I got some new events. I stayed on helicopter, but instead of geologic mapping and electric vehicle, I got switched to tower and codebuster. So to give a little background information about these two new events, first of all, tower is an event where you have to build the strongest tower out of balsa wood that can also hold up the most weight. The maximum load is 15 kilograms, and your goal is to hold that maximum load while keeping your tower weight as low as possible. And my other new event was Cold Busters, which is a test-based event where you and your team have to solve as many ciphers as possible in 50 minutes. And there's also a timed question at the beginning of the test that can give you bonus points by solving it fast. So right after I got assigned these events after regionals, I started preparing for states. For helicopter, I kept the same overall build as regionals, but I optimized the rubber motor through a lot of testing. So for tower, the first tower we built after regionals was a 12 layer cross member tower. And here's how it looked like. So for tower, of course, you can just make a very heavy tower that can easily hold 15 kilograms. And that's where the actual hard part of the event comes in, where you have to find the right balance between a very heavy and strong tower that can easily hold the maximum load and a very light tower that can barely hold a few kilograms. So we built a three leg tower and on each of the three sides, there were 12 layers of X shaped cross members. But why did we choose the X shaped cross member? As you guys probably already know, triangles are very important in structural engineering because they're the strongest shape. We also made our three side legs triangular, which cut down a lot of weight. And moving on to the side legs of our tower, we cut them down to triangular shaped pieces because again, it takes away more than half of the weight from the balsa while still being very, very structurally stable. And of course, you have to find a way to somehow precisely put the tower together, right? So for that, we had a 3D printed jig and we secured all the pieces onto it and then glued them together. And don't forget, the more glue you use, the heavier your tower becomes. So we only had time to build one more tower for states and we decided to go with a previous design that was tested before, which was a 10 layer cross member tower that weighed a bit more coming in at 5.2 to 5.3 grams. Moving on to Code Busters, I had two partners and I had to learn three ciphers. The Porta Cipher, the Nihilist Cipher, and the Hill Cipher. And for those of you guys not familiar with cryptography or ciphers, a cipher is just an encoded sentence or phrase that you have to decode and solve, usually with the help of a key. So all of these letters under the blank boxes here, that's the actual cipher text that we have to decode. And under this, there's some numbers, and that shows the frequency of each cipher text letter in this quote. So by doing an analysis of the frequencies and the patterns and doing a lot of practice, you begin to find patterns like this and understand that it's, it is. The Porta and Nihilus cipher were pretty straightforward. In the Porta cipher, you just have to use a table and find a letter that corresponds to your letter. And in the Nihilus cipher, it's also a table where you find a corresponding number for every word, and then you subtract that number from your cipher text. And I know to you guys, it's probably pretty confusing, but if this video gets 100 likes, I can make a more in-depth video explaining all these ciphers and how to solve them. So States came around after less than a month and it was held at UVA. My first event was Code Busters and we didn't solve too many ciphers on the test. So we weren't expecting a very good placement. After that, it was time for Tower. We really hoped we could get 15 kilograms. We put the tower on the table. We were loading the sand and everything seemed perfect. We thought it would hold 15 kilograms. And right as we were loading our last cup of sand, we were less than 80 grams away from max load, the tower broke. We were very disappointed and sad after that, but we still hoped for a decent placement. And finally, my last event was helicopter. We hoped to get a time of around two minutes, 10 seconds, because the ceiling was pretty high and that definitely increases your time by a lot. Our first flight attempt only got one minute and 20 seconds. Oh, 
and we didn't really know what was going on. We checked the helicopter and everything seemed fine. So for our second attempt, we tried the exact same setup and we got a flight time of around one minute and 50 seconds, which was still less than we hoped, but it was decent. And until now, I'm not very sure about what happened, but I think it could have been because of a winding mistake. For example, I noticed when testing my helicopter that if you don't stretch the rubber band back enough, then your time can be significantly decreased. So all my events were done, and after spending some time relaxing and walking around the campus, it was time for the award ceremony. <laughs> And after all of the individual event rankings, it was time for the most important part, the team rankings. Because the number one team gets a guaranteed spot at nationals in Nebraska, which is the highest level of tournament in Science Olympia. Our team was confident that we got a spot in the top three, but we didn't know if we would get first. And our team did an amazing job. We got top three in almost every single event. Fourth place was announced, not us. And now it was time for the top three. Third was also not us. And then it came to second place and it wasn't us either. So we were almost certain that it was us at first, but it was still a moment of truth for us. The entire team was anxious. And when they finally announced first place, Teacher! I just wanted to emphasize that Science Olympiad is a team thing. There's 19 people on our team and every one of us has to be dedicated to our events and show the best possible result they can to be able to go to nationals as a team. Because this is a team thing, not a personal thing. And in Science Olympiad, there's around 23 events and I personally only participated in three. So the entire team has to be able to cover all 23 of them. And every single person on the team did three to four events. So we had a little bit more than a month to prepare for nationals, which seems like a pretty long amount of time. But for me personally, I had a lot of homework, I had a lot of tests coming up, and I had a vacation for spring break. So that one month was in reality a very small amount of time. So starting off with helicopter, we noticed that our helicopter got damaged on the way back from states. So we had to completely rebuild and make a new one. Me and my partner each made a new helicopter so we could use one as the main one and one as a backup. They both turned out pretty well, and again, we got to work on optimizing the rubber motor to make it fly as long as possible. At regionals and states, 1 minute and 30 could get you a medal, but at nationals, it's nothing. We also had very little time to make the tower because there was a lot of conflicts in schedules. And of course, our previous tower broke after states. And this is one of the hard parts of the tower event because Every single time after you test the tower, it breaks and you have to build a new one and the cycle just keeps going. So we only had time to build one tower before nationals and we decided to take a huge risk. We went for an extremely lightweight tower coming in at 4.89 grams, which was almost 0.4 grams less than our state's one. And it also had 12 layers of cross members, which was two more than the state's one. We knew that if this tower held the full load, we would basically be guaranteed a medal or even top three. But there was also a pretty big chance that it broke very early. So that meant we would be in a pretty bad place. We also kept practicing code busters and I got to work on learning a new cipher called the Aristocrat. And just like that, it was time for nationals. Since the entire helicopter is very fragile, as you can see, it's very important to be able to transport it well. And since I had to transport this to Nebraska through a flight and through some driving as well, it was very important to keep the helicopter intact and safe. So the first thing that I decided to do was to make these foam cutouts for the rotors to fit in perfectly. But since I had to fit it into my carry-on baggage, this was a little too big. So the next thing I did was I 3D printed some custom holders for all of the rotors and the motor sticks. Here's the holder for the top one. This is the holder for the bottom rotor. 
and this is the holder for the motor sticks. And my dad conveniently had this suitcase that fit perfectly within the size requirements of a carry-on bag, and it's very rigid. So it's practically impossible for the helicopter to break in this. And the suitcase looks boring on the outside, so I decided to add some stickers. We came to the University of Lincoln, Nebraska Thursday night. <laughs> And Friday was a fun day where we got to explore the campus, visit the Science Olympiad STEM Expo, and also go to the opening ceremony. Science Olympiad has a cool tradition after the opening ceremony called a swap meet, where teams come in with cool things such as plushies and shirts, and they try trading with other teams to get something that they want. And I got the most prized thing at the swap meet, the cheese hat. So I started with our team's plush bear. and some cool collectibles from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And I was able to trade the bear up to a full-body Coca-Cola suit. And I traded the university collectibles for a bandana. And then I asked around a lot of people who had the cheese hat, and I was finally able to find a person that could give me the cheese hat for all of the things I had. And at that moment, I felt like a trading Olympiad participant. And the next day on Saturday was time for all of the events. Again, my first event was Code Busters early in the morning. And when the test started, we all started working on the time question because it gives a really big bonus. And we thought we got it in around four minutes, which is a pretty good time and it can give you a substantial bonus. But when the event supervisors went to check if the cipher was correct, unfortunately, it was not. And it took us so long to figure out what we did wrong all the way until nine minutes and 57 seconds which basically gives you no bonus at all. And we were so close to getting the cipher right. We were only two letters away. But in the cipher, you have to be able to make quick, educated guesses and assumptions to fill out the cipher without actually filling in everything and checking. So the word was actually backed, but we put formed because we saw the ending ED and formed seemed to fit well with the sentence. So that was really unfortunate and we were all pretty disappointed. After that was Tower, and me and my partner were both nervous since we had no idea what was going to happen. And when we walked into the Tower event, we were pleasantly surprised because at the Nationals level, the setup quality is very high. For example, they had expensive high-speed slow motion cameras that recorded every single Tower that participated. And also at the end, there was an expert that could talk to any team that wanted to analyze the slow motion footage of the Tower breaking and tell them what was going on and what could have caused the breakage. So we put our tower on the testing stand and we waited nervously. We loaded and unfortunately it broke at 11 kilograms, which is not too bad, but it's not the maximum load. But that was our balance point between the tower weighing very little and the tower weighing a lot. And as we figured out, our balance point was not right. So when it got to our turn to analyze the footage with the expert, he told us that our tower was pretty good and that there was a high likelihood that the top of the tower got bumped somewhere during transportation or while we were working on it because it's very uncommon to see towers with our design break near the top. And finally, it was time for helicopter. When we came to the place where helicopter was being held, we were shocked because there was a ledge around halfway to the ceiling and it was covering around one third of the space. So if you don't launch your helicopter under the ledge, there's a high risk of the helicopter 
going to the ledge and then getting stuck there and not being able to get up. And when we came, we saw dozens of helicopters already stuck on that ledge and it was very scary. So we had two options. One, we could launch our helicopter under the ledge, meaning it would not get stuck above it, but we would have a substantially lower time since the ceiling was lower. And our other option was risk getting trapped in the ledge, but going for the high ceiling. And of course, we took the risk. So we launched the helicopter under the ceiling and everything seemed fine until it wasn't. As the helicopter was finally descending, it flew right to the ledge and we thought it would land there and get stuck forever. But luckily, around two inches above the ledge, the helicopter randomly veered off and landed normally. And the time for our first run was one minute and 50 seconds. And that was pretty disappointing for us, but there were a couple reasons why that happened. First of all, we had to add a lot of weight to our helicopter at the place because the supervisors told us it didn't weigh enough, even though we use a precise electronic scale to weigh it. And it was four grams, which is the minimum. And we use a precise scale down to the milligram that was being used at the regional and state competitions. But at nationals, they used a different scale. And based on that scale, we had to add a lot of weight to our helicopter. So I don't know, maybe our scale was inaccurate or maybe the nationals one was but that definitely decreased our flight time. Another thing that a lot of competitors and coaches mentioned was that the room had AC on full blast, and that's not a good sign for helicopters because strong airflow in a room can make the helicopter less balanced and in turn lower the flight time. So for our second run, we went for a pretty similar setup, except we winded the rubber motor just a little bit more, and we got two minutes, two seconds, which was not that bad. So as a team, we got a pretty good result, 19th place and we did better than last year. And I wanted to say that Nationals is the best of the best, where teams had to do the best in their state to get there. And there were 60 teams competing and more than 2,000 people. And that marked the end of the 2024 to 2025 Science Olympiad season. It was a really good experience, and I hope to be able to do Science Olympiad next year. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe. And I'll be glad to share with you guys my future Science Olympiad experiences. Bye.